Built in 1625, the Hilton Santa Fe Historic Plaza was originally the hacienda of New Mexico's Ortiz family, one of the most prominent families in the city. In 1973, Hilton acquired, restored, and expanded the hacienda while preserving its historic features. Today, guests can enjoy the history and romance of this historic hotel and relive the story of the origins of Santa Fe. My name is Christine Samgal. I am the catering sales manager here at the Kilchen Santa Fe Historic Plaza. Um, I actually have been with our company for quite a bit of years. Um, and this here is the Hilton Santa Fe Historic Plaza. We are actually currently in the most historic part of this property. Um, starting right here, all of this, this is the original building right here. Everything else added that we're going to see later on down the road was added later in life, but this part is the story. Now, the Ortiz family is who our founders were. The Ortiz family, they came down as they came down from Mexico City, and it it's kind of a devastating story because in 1964 they actually did what's called the Walk of Death. And unfortunately, there were 66 other families that walked with them from Mexico City to Santa Fe and found it. The only thing is, is that unfortunately, our founder, Mr. Nicholas Ortiz, his daughter did die on the way, but six of his kids did make it through the trip. And they actually founded this beautiful property. They built it as a hacienda. It was always meant to be a hotel. This part is still the historic part so right over here, you're going to see a lot of little windows around our property, just like this one. And basically what we're trying to showcase is that this is the original building. It's still standing and we do work very hard to preserve not only the culture, but we also preserve the building itself. We are historic. We are nationally ranked and that we want to make sure people know our history because it's so important to Santa Fe, especially the Ortiz family. He, they were so prominent in Santa Fe where they had, they were influencers in politics. They were influencers in the church. They were heavily, heavily involved in the founding of Santa Fe and what it is today. And in fact, the Fiestas de Santa Fe that is celebrated starting August 31st, there has to be an Ortiz family member in that march and procession when they bring our conquistadora from um, the cathedral. They have to make sure that our Ortiz family is still included in that. We do host a lot of the events within Santa Fe. We do try to make sure we especially incorporate our local heritage and the locals here. We do a lot of events with them just to make sure that we don't lose touch with our culture. So this is where we come into the newer additions to this building. So our meeting rooms, these are all new. This lobby area is all new. And we definitely try to still incorporate our culture. Um, if you guys can see through the property, we do have these little bits of our culture and native influence. Those all are traditional pottery that we still have. We only showcase local vendors from New Mexico and from certain um, Pueblos that had influence when Mr. Ortiz was still here. We do showcase a lot of other statues as well. Some of them are for sale. However, we really try to only just showcase local artists. The pool and everywhere out here was recently remodeled and that was turned into just the pool and the outdoor place that people can hang out and relax. But if you can picture 
back there, that third wall, that used to be where the stables were and where the all of the livestock were that we had. The hacienda actually, they had a small hotel, so 18 rooms. It did include a bakery. It was gorgeous. And then it did include later on a private chapel. Our meeting room that I'm gonna take you to now is the chapel and it was basically modeled after what it looked like originally when Mr. Ortiz had the chapel up. The chapel, um, it still has a few antiques from the original chapel. It's just a separate addition, additional space because where the chapel originally was, it got turned into um, the canyon meeting room. And this here is our chapel. We use it for many different things. A lot of um, churches within the downtown area, they like to use this for meetings actually and for private services. Um, we do have the original table. These are still from the original chapel. And then of course we do have our native pottery. Some of them are historic and some of them are not. Uh, we do again, really only showcase New Mexico local artists at our hotel. I started working here in 1997 and waited on Burton, but I started from the bottle. In 1997, I started banquets and then I jumped in the permit to the permit. So now I'm the bartender. Mexican old fashioned and the regular old fashioned. Mexican old fashioned is uh, uh, mezcal and uh, chocolate bitters and tequila. Nice. Tequila. This is Montelobos Mascal. Chocolate bitters. And then a little bit of honey, Mexican honey. No, not shaking. Because if you shake in, they lose the favor with you shaking with the mat with the eyes. They shake in because you shake in too much. The only shaking is the martinis. Ready? Then serve it. This is a glass of uh, margarita. We're going to make it. And then we use the lemon for the salt. The rim. And then this is for the house. The rodura tequila silver. Oranges. Lime squishes. Shake it.
bit of adrenaline. I'm a native to Santa Fe, um, born and raised. Um, I've been chefing for now, like a, as an actual executive chef. I went to, uh, well, I got my culinary degree from the Escoffier's Culinary Arts through an online program. But other than that, you know, I've been cooking around town with a bunch of really good cooks and stuff like that. So my first executive chef job was in 2013 was right down the street here at the palace. And then I was executive chef over at a steakhouse for about seven years. And then now I'm here. I'm so over here I have lobster fettuccine. Um, it's a, a jalapeno cream sauce. Um, so it's, you know, kind of leaving it uh, southwestern, I guess, a little chilly in there. You know, because I feel like people, when they come to Santa Fe, they want to, you know, get something from the culture, um, something that, some chili, you know, other things are good, but you know, for the most part, that's why people come to the Southwest because they look for those Southwestern flavors. It's lobster tail. It's lobster tail and it's uh, sauteed. It has uh, jalapenos, garlic, um, some cherry tomatoes, and then a little Parmesan cream sauce in there. And then it's garnished with a, a lemon. Because the lemon, I always like to use acid in my, in my cooking because it always brightens out the flavor, you know, so it brings out everything in the flavors that it needs to come out. You know, I come up with the recipes in my head. I write down the recipes and, you know, and uh, then I try it out and then have people try it, you know, have them like my guinea pig. They would want to come and be my guinea pigs, you know, and it always turns out to be good. One thing that I put into consideration is um, what people like, you know, for the most majority, every everybody likes almost the same thing and you try to incorporate that into the dishes a little bit. It's something, you know, there's a lot of places you go that there's green chili in almost about everything. Um, you know, so I like to change it up a little bit. Jalapeno. Like that one has a jalapeno, but that dish is gonna actually be with uh, Fresno chilies when I put it on the menu. So Fresno chilies, they're a little bit more mild they're, and they're red. Um, they're a little bit more mild than, um, than the jalapenos. They have a different kind of spice. You know, they don't have this overwhelming spice where you eat it right away and it and it just, you know, just takes over your palate and then you're like, oh my God. You know, the Fresno chili, it, it kind of like lingers a little bit and it's mild and, you know, you, you feel it, but you don't feel that like initial heat that it has to it. And this is the line where we make all the food over here. So, you know, you got your fryer, you got your salamander, um, your stove and all this stuff. So my favorite piece of equipment is actually the salamander. So the salamander is a, essentially a broiler. Um, you know, you can melt the cheese up there. Um, it cooks steaks really, really well. From what my understanding why it's called salamander is, you know, like a salamander, like a lizard or whatever bike comes in and out so it slides in and out so you could cook steaks up there and and poultry and everything else up there i lead by example i'm one of the chefs that lead by example i'll train them and i'll chop veggies and i'll do what i have to do to you know to make everything run as smooth as possible for my part of being a chef too you know i like to make people happy and you know um a bite of food could make a person very happy after having a you know a bad day for the 4th of July, we have in Santa Fe a really big pancake festival where the Rotary Club serves pancakes on the plaza to everyone who wants to join. And they actually make them in our kitchen. Yeah. That is, a, a, again, a big part of the Hilton Santa Fe Historic Plaza is making sure that we incorporate ourselves into local events. So we donate our kitchen to them. Yeah.